Hi everyone, Martha Hayes speaking. I am here today with my colleague Laura Pautinski and we are going to do something slightly different today with our podcast because we are going to interview each other. Normally Laura and I would be busy interviewing different members of the Eurachmus Consortium for our collection of podcasts but today we're actually going to chat with each other about the podcasts and videos we've been creating for the Eurachmus project. Both Laura and I create the content and edit the content for the podcast and videos. So we thought, what better way to chat about it than to chat to each other? So how do you propose we kick this off then, Laura? I guess we start with kind of what we need to produce for the Oracleus project as part of the project brief. So that was five videos and 50 podcasts. Um, so 50 podcasts, it's a lot of podcasts. Um, we're currently over halfway through our podcast, which, as our listeners will know, can be found on the Spotify channel. So I thought I would tell our listeners why I've gone to Spotify to host our podcast. And that is because it's currently one of the biggest streaming services globally. And when we actually chatted with the rest of the Eurachmus Consortium, we realised it was something that most people are on. And we wanted it to be a system where you could be listening to music and then you could just transfer across and listen to one of our Eurachmus podcasts. So that's why we decided to go to Spotify for hosting our podcast. And our videos can be found on both the website and on the Eurachmus YouTube channel. So I suppose we ought to discuss how we decide what content we go for for our Eurachmus podcast. Yeah. So that's kind of my that's kind of my area, isn't it? Um, so um, as part of our dissemination plan for Eurachnos, um, I have looked through all of our different consortium members and thought about what roles they've had in the project um, in terms of what work they could talk about. But also because um, we've got the communication element, what links we've got with our um, thematic network um, network. Um, so we've got a few different projects that we featured. So um, Affinet 4D4F to name just a few um, so looking at who who we can talk to to get some interesting content um, then pinning the people down to record the podcast is, is quite often the challenging part That's isn't it Martha <laughs> yeah that is the tricky part and we would love to be able to give you lots of tips and hints for overcoming this one but we're still working that out currently <laughs> lots of lots of reminders and Direct emails or messages or sometimes even a phone call. Just, just to... Exactly, exactly. But what we do find is when we finally pin down people to chat to us on the Eurachnos podcast, they always thoroughly enjoy it and we always manage to produce a very good podcast. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. So we would recommend to others who are listening, who are potentially trying to produce podcasts for a thematic network to keep persisting because actually it can be a really enjoyable experience recording the podcast. Um, so in terms of videos, how do we decide on our content for our videos, Laura? Can you give a bit of an overview on that? Um, again, it sort of is looking at, so the videos are really trying to convey the work being done by your Um Again, similar to the podcasts. Um, so it's taking advantage of where we are so we've got a couple of videos from when Martha and I were at the Budapest workshop right at the start of the project um, so we could feature what different um, what different actors who were present at that workshop thought that the Arachnus project could provide them what benefits they thought that the Arachnus could provide um, and it's really nice to look back at that and see that we are delivering on those and then the other one that we were um, doing was just presenting what the workshop aimed to do and a little bit of an introduction about what Eurachnus aims to do as well. Um, so those were our first two videos. And then our remaining three videos, um, we actually decided would be really good animated videos um, because that was the easiest way to communicate about the, the or disseminate about 
the uh, content that we're, we're producing in your Atmos. Um, it's sometimes easier to actually portray the message through animations, don't we? There's, you know, there's only so much you can do with interviews and actually sometimes you have to think to get this communicated and disseminated efficiently and effectively, we need to use animations and deliver the message in a slightly different way. So that's why we went for those, those animated videos, isn't it, Laura? Yeah, there's some slightly abstract concepts in, in your Agnos. So really being able to make use of metaphors, like we quite like the uh, growing of plants to show the blossoming of ideas um, and, and different ways of, of depicting networks and things. So we get to be quite creative in um, how our visuals match our script for the voiceover for those animated videos, which is quite fun. Yeah, that is one of our favourite jobs, definitely. And... I suppose we ought to talk about what we're hoping to achieve with this method of communication. You know, why are we doing 50 podcasts and why are we doing five videos? I think they're, they're a little bit less intimidating, first of all, than, you know, several pages of report. Um, you know, we're all very busy people who are short on time and a po particularly podcasts are something you can stick on whilst you're doing something else and, and listen to, to and, and hear it. Um, and, and pull out any anything that's particularly interesting or relevant to you. Um, with videos, again, um, similar to, as you were saying about Spotify, YouTube is a really great channel um, to, to hold on to those videos and, and share those through. Um, and it's just a bit more engaging as well than reading text, I think, being able to see a video. And as I said, pairing the visuals with what's being said um, in a voiceover can be really quite powerful and, and might even get the message across slightly better than um, than trying to convey in words. Um, also with videos, um, there's the translation option of YouTube has quite good automated translations and you can manually edit those as well. Um, so you can get some good subtitles on there, which again can be quite labor intensive for um if you were try to try to do that to a full report for example yeah yeah um i don't know if you'd agree with me laura but for me a really nice aspect to take away from creating the podcast is how effective a team approach can be um so laura and i are responsible for creating these 50 podcasts and although we decide the content and we edit the podcast we've been able to share this with the whole project and we've been able to say to our partners who has context with this thematic network or who has some really good inside knowledge on this topic and that has meant that the interviewee has always had a good interest and a real flair for the topic that's being discussed because we've been able to share this responsibility out through our project so nearly every partner of the Euratnos project has created a podcast, which is a really nice, inclusive approach. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. And also you can you can get quite creative with the format of it. For example, when we were forced to do our um, latest project meeting online, I was able to, to say, right, we're going to pause my presentation for 10 minutes. We're going to record a podcast. So you might have already listened to that one as well. Um, and so get yeah, get creative. It doesn't just have to be a one on one interview. Um, you can think about other formats as well, similar to what we're doing at the moment of having more of a of an informal chat or an interview interview interviewee um, kind of format. It 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 can be really variable and, and interesting. And I think another point that probably is worth covering here is how easy it is to create a podcast. Um, I mean, a lot of partners may think that you need a lot of um, technical equipment, but you really don't. And what we've learned during this COVID-19 pandemic is how you can adapt the tools you have currently to create these podcasts. So Laura and I are currently hundreds of miles apart, but we're sat having this conversation on Teams and we have simply pressed the record button. Um, prior to this, pandemic Laura and I were going out and meeting people face to face and using our iPhones to record the podcast but actually even in a post-covid world we potentially would save on the miles and continue using this approach um, and it really is very straightforward and anybody can record the podcast this way. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think the other point we we should probably mention is it's recording content and popping it on Spotify and YouTube um, and also our website as well. Um, but then how do we try and draw people in to, to come and view those or listen to those um, rather than relying on them organically stumbling upon it? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, the communication is a, is a hugely important aspect. And again, it sort of links back to what we're talking about with utilising your partners. If you record a podcast about a thematic network, you can then utilise all the context that that thematic network has to share the podcast through their umbrella. So it's a nice ripple effect of communicating the Eurachnos project through the podcast, which then means it's communicated out from other thematic networks too. So that's been really effective. Yeah, mo lots of using of, of appropriate hashtags and, and tagging of, of projects and relevant yeah, I definitely agree. In terms of social media, you know, those links you've made with other thematic networks, tag them in that post and encourage them to share it. Um, and yes, as Laura says, lots of appropriate hashtags. And the same applies for videos, even if perhaps the thematic network has had nothing to do with the creation of that video they may still find it interesting to share with their following. So there's no harm in tagging them in it. And if they decide not to share it, then it doesn't matter. But nine times out of 10, if you tag them in it, they will then share that video out for you. Yeah, that's a, a nice, nice way to uh, make use of our, our thematic network community, I think. I think so too. So do you think we've got it all covered there, Laura? I think so. And at this point, I suppose we can point out that if any of you had any questions or want any tips and guidance, then just get in touch through the Arachnos social medias. The Arachnos project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme under Grant Agreement number 817863. Royalty-free music from Ben Sound.